Offensive Weapons Section 1 of the Prevention of Crime Act 1953 covers the offence of having an offensive weapon in a public place. It tells us that any person who, without lawful authority or reasonable excuse, the proof whereof shall lie on him, has with him in any public place any offensive weapon, shall be guilty of an offence. So first we need to understand what an offensive weapon is. The legislation goes on to tell us that this is any article made or adapted for use for causing injury to the person or intended by the person having it with him for such use by him or some other person. So let's break this down. It's any article made for causing injury to a person. Articles falling within this category are considered to be offensive weapons per se and there's no need to go on to consider the intention or purpose of the person carrying them. Case law has suggested that flick knives, butterfly knives and daggers come into this category, but not other knives. Sword sticks, knuckle dusters, coshes and bayonets have also been considered offensive weapons per se. Whether an article is made for causing injury is largely a question of fact to be determined by the courts when dealing with any particular case. Then we have any article adapted for causing injury to a person. Inclusion in this category is considered on a case-by-case basis, as it includes things like sharpened screwdrivers, deliberately broken bottles, and many other adapted household items. In fact, weapons that are adapted for causing injury could include practically anything, even a potato with razor blades protruding from it. But don't forget, if the article hasn't been adapted, then it's not included here. For example, the empty bottle refilled with acid. That said, it could come under the next category. So in the third category, we have an article intended to cause injury to a person. Here we would need to understand the offender's state of mind, which wasn't necessary in the previous point involving offensive weapons per se. Because these are articles that are not specifically made or adapted for the purpose of causing injury, but which may be considered offensive if a court or jury decides that the defendant intended them to be used for the purpose of causing injury to the person. So this might include a bottle full of acid, a corrosive cleaning fluid, or even a hammer or a cricket bat. Notice that the legislation specifically talks about causing injury to a person, so bear in mind we're not worried about property or other living things. Finally, the legislation states by him or another person, so it could be carried by one person for the use of another. The legislation says that the weapon must be carried without lawful authority or reasonable excuse. Therefore, there's a defence for a person to prove that he did have lawful authority or reasonable excuse for having the article in a public place. Now, the courts have suggested that lawful authority only applies to those people who from time to time carry an offensive weapon as a matter of duty the soldier and his rifle, and the police officer with his truncheon. Other people, however, may have reasonable excuse. Whether the individual's explanation amounts to a reasonable excuse is a matter for the courts to determine. Not being aware that you have an offensive weapon is not a reasonable excuse in itself. Neither is forgetting you have it, except in unusual circumstances, such as those caused by illness or medication. The Act is not intended to permit the carrying of weapons simply to guard against the threat of general violence. However, if a person felt that they were about to be the victim of an imminent and violent attack, and they had the weapon to protect themselves from this specific danger, it might be considered a reasonable excuse. In the first instance, the prosecution must prove he had an offensive weapon in a public place. Once this is established, the burden of providing lawful authority or reasonable excuse lies with the defendant. Now, the Criminal Justice Act 1988, Section 139, in relation to having bladed or pointed articles in a public place, talks of good reason rather than reasonable excuse, but we'll cover that in a separate video on knives, blades and pointed articles. So now we need to look at the term has with him, and we need to understand the principle of instantaneous arming. Where a person uses an article offensively in a public place, The offensive use of the article does not tell us whether he had it with him as an offensive weapon within Section 1 of the Prevention of Crime Act 1953. Having an article innocently will be converted into having the article guiltily if an intent to use the article offensively is formed before the actual occasion to use violence has arisen, and this is the principle of instantaneous arming.
So here's the example of R versus Dura 1954. On the day in question, he went with a woman to a public park where there was a shooting gallery and, after firing some shots at the target, in a moment of anger, turned round and fired at the woman as she walked away and hit her on the hip causing a slight wound. His conviction for carrying an offensive weapon in a public place was quashed on appeal on the basis that possession of an article for legitimate purposes in public would only be later held to be possessing it guiltily if the intent to use the article in an offensive manner was formed before imminent violence has arisen. He was, however, convicted of common assault. We have another case where it was alleged that an injury to the complainant was caused by the appellant throwing the car jack or wheel brace which he took from the boot of his car in the course of a fight. Now, if an article already in possession lawfully and for good reason is used offensively to cause an injury, such use does not necessarily prove the intent in respect of articles which are not offensive per se. So each case must depend on its own facts. Now we've been talking about public place and a public place includes any highway and any other premises or place to which at the material time the public have or are permitted to have access whether on payment or otherwise. The Prevention of Crime Act 1953 Section 1A provides the offence of threatening with offensive weapons in public. This is an aggravated possession offence and specifically states that a person is guilty of that offence if that person has an offensive weapon with him in a public place, unlawfully, and intentionally threatens another person with a weapon and does so in such a way that there is an immediate risk of serious physical harm to that person. So offensive weapon and public place have the same meaning as in section 1 that we've just discussed. For the purposes of this section, physical harm is serious if it amounts to grievous bodily harm for the purposes of the Offences Against the Person Act 1861, which just to remind us includes injury resulting in permanent disability, loss of sensory function or visible disfigurement, broken bones, injuries which cause substantial loss of blood, usually necessitating a transfusion or result in lengthy treatment or incapacity, or serious psychiatric injury. It is possible to raise the defences of self-defence, defence of others or property, or prevention of crime. There are several other offences relating to offensive weapons. The Criminal Law Act 1977, Section 8, covers trespassing with a weapon of offence. It states... A person who is on any premises as a trespasser, having entered as such, is guilty of an offence if, without lawful authority or reasonable excuse, he has with him on the premises any weapon of offence. Now in this particular section, section 8, weapon of offence means any article made or adapted for use for causing injury to, or incapacitating a person, or intending by the person having it with him for such use. So the definition we've been discussing up until now has been extended to include incapacitation. You may notice this is the same as the definition for aggravated burglary. As the offence states, the person must have entered as a trespasser. So it does not include those who have lawfully entered a premises and subsequently become a trespasser. Premises, in this case, means any building, any part of a building under separate occupation, any land ancillary to a building, and that means if it's adjacent to it and used or intended for use in connection with the occupation of that building or any part of it, the site comprising any building or buildings together with any ancillary land, any structure other than a movable one, and then any movable structure, vehicle or vessel designed or adapted for use for residential purposes. Now we move on to the manufacture, sale and hire of offensive weapons from section 141 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988 which states, any person who manufactures, sells or hires, or offers for sale or hire, exposes or has in his possession for the purpose of sale or hire, or lends or gives to any other person, a weapon to which this section applies shall be guilty of an offence. The Act also goes on to say that the importation of a weapon to which this section applies is hereby prohibited. We're provided with a list of weapons that are covered by this act, including knuckle dusters, sword sticks, hand claws, belt buckle knives, and others. There are a number of specific defences in relation to this offence, 
such as transactions made by museums and galleries. So offensive weapons in summary. Having an offensive weapon in a public place includes any article made, adapted or intended for use for causing injury to the person. There is a defence for that person to prove they had reasonable excuse or lawful authority for having the article in a public place. But remember, lawful authority only applies to those people who from time to time carry an offensive weapon as a matter of duty. And reasonable excuse is a matter for the courts to determine. The Act is not intended to permit the carrying of weapons simply to guard against the threat of general violence. Threatening with offensive weapons in public requires that he unlawfully and intentionally threaten another person with a weapon in such a way that there is an immediate risk of serious physical harm, which amounts to GBH to that other person. Trespassing with a weapon of offence requires that he enters as a trespasser and has with him on the premises any weapon of offence, and in this case includes those capable of incapacitating a person. Manufacture, sale and hire of offensive weapons also includes the importation of weapons, and there's a specific list of weapons and defences.